Namaskar my dear students today we will be discussing a very important topic of preclinical prosthodontics that is how to do the cast marking there are certain important guidelines for the dental cast they are also called as the reference lines that we will be discussing today in this video so let's begin now the question is why to do the cast marking this is very important because they are the reference lines which help to fabricate and analyze our occlusal rims that we have prepared second they act as the guidelines for doing the teeth arrangement so let us discuss the marking for the maxillary cast first is incisive papilla it is a very valuable guide because it is a stable landmark and has a constant relationship to the natural central incisors it helps in marking the midline in the edentulous cast it also helps in marking the canine line on the edentulous cast it marks the position of the labial contour of the occlusal rims which is approximately 8 to 10 mm in front of the middle of the incisive papilla besides it acts as a reference for positioning the central incisors which is again 8 to 10 mm in front of the middle of the incisive papilla midline midline is a line which bisects the incisive papilla anterior posteriorly the incisive papilla is a much more reliable landmark for the midline than the labial frenum the midline should be extended down the front of the cast so that it is visible and helps in arranging the maxillary central incisors canine line once we have marked the incisive papilla and the midline the line which passes posterior to the incisive papilla horizontally on the edentulous cast is the canine line in the dentate person this line passes through the tips of the canine and it passes from the center of the incisive papilla what the studies have shown while in the edentulous when the resorption of the alveolar bone takes place the incisive papilla moves forward and upward so the canine line passes posterior to the is incisive papilla in the edentulous and while doing the teeth arrangement it should pass from the cusp tips it marks the position of the canines ridge line the line which bisects the major portion of the ridge is called as the ridge line the line extends from the canine line posteriorly to the land area bisecting the ridge the occlusal rim should follow this line while doing the teeth arrangement the central groove of the posterior teeth should lie slightly buckled to this line now let us discuss some important guidelines in relation to the mandibular cast retromolar pads a very important landmark on the mandibular cast because the position of the pads remain constant even after the natural teeth are extracted so once we have marked the retromolar pad divide it into three equal parts second it acts as a excellent guide for determining the plane of occlusion so while fabricating the occlusal rims the height of the rims posteriorly should flush with the two third height of the retromolar pad it also helps in recording the ridge line canine line a line that bisects the interior portion of the ridge horizontally is called as the canine line it is an important guideline which marks the position of the canines in the lower arch ridge line a very important reference line a line which is drawn from the canine region which bisects the retromolar pad posteriorly is the ridge line all the reference lines should be extended to the land area so that they are visible when the rims are placed on the cast then the occlusal rims are fabricated according to this ridge line it will bisect the occlusal rim posteriorly while doing the teeth arrangement it marks the placement of the central grooves on the ridge 
another very important reference line a line which is drawn from the lingual to the ridge in the premolar area to the lingual of the retromolar pad it marks the lingual extent of the occlusal rims so that's all for today please like and share the video you can give your topics in the comment section do subscribe for more learning wish you success